from New Hanover County Schools Television. Powered by students. This is your school news. Welcome to your school news for the week of November 2nd through the 8th, 2015. I'm Sierra Darmy. And I'm Marley Hughes. Topping off newscasts this week, New Hanover County Schools holds 2015 Transition Fair, Williams Elementary holds reverse treating event for students, and Strategic Planning Community Survey now available online. Our top story this week, as a part of North Carolina's Disability Employment Awareness Month, the New Hanover County Schools Transition Advisory Team held the 2015 Transition, Transition Fair for parents and students with disabilities and special needs. The fair this year was held at Cape Fair Community College Union Stadium. With a, couple, with a complete report on the event is YSN reporter Stephen Thornton. The school system's transition department had an exciting day as they held the 2015 transition fair for, a for approximately 300 young adults from New Hanover, Brunswick, and Pender counties. The transition fair gives these students with disabilities a chance to decide what to do after their tenure at high school and features many agencies and employers to help give them that chance. The transition fair gives them an opportunity to interact with agencies that provide them support services in the community or in the home but it also gives them an opportunity to interact with um, schools that they can participate in programs after graduation from high school or completion of high school and get some contact information to have an idea about their plans for uh, future employment or future in, um, education. The fair also gave families a chance to meet with lots of different agencies that helped to smooth the transition process. It was a beneficial event for students and their families. The transition fair showcased resources like the Disability Resource Center, the Family Support Network and the Exceptional Children's Assistance Center, and others. Representatives from all the agencies were there to give first-hand support and tips. Overall, we help with career readiness um, for job placements, work experience. We do individualized plans for curriculum that has to do with career readiness. So we can help with interview skills, building resumes, professionalism, um, and just overall getting young adults ages 14 to 24 ready for their next step in life. And um, we have opportunities at Sam's Club for Employment. We have over 200 local employees, and we brought some brochures where they, can, they have to apply online for, for employment. And we're here to also tell them about memberships if they're ever interested in joining. The transition fair drew reps from AT&T, Walmart, Hampton and Medical Park, and Petco. This year's transition fair included evening breakout sessions. These included Project STEPP, presented by East Carolina University, Why Start Early, preparing for after high school, vocational rehabilitation services, and others. The fair exposed families to the opportunities in employment, educational, and community services in the southeastern region. Most importantly, the fair instilled a good sense of confidence in young men and women preparing for the next stage of their lives. Reporting for your school news, sure. this is Stephen uh, Thornton. Look at the camera, I guess. Uh, Scott. Oh, okay, uh, Scott Levine, uh, L-E-V-I-N-E, -E, and I'm with Educational Data. Wilmington Mayor Bill Sappho and New Hanover County Commissioner Jonathan Barfield visited. Castle Hayne Elementary School last week. The two representatives spoke with the school's SGA students about the differences between county and city government. They discussed how laws, policies, and ordinances for the city are passed through a council, while in the county those same items are passed through a board of commissioners. As the two men spoke, the Castle Hayne students discovered that there are many differences between a city and a county and are more than just geographic and population based. The SGA students also had the chance to ask questions to expand their knowledge of government. Both Mayor Sappo and Commissioner Barfield talked about how cities and countries today work together to provide citizens medical centers, fire department, sanitation services, and law enforcement. Last week, staff members from Mary C. Williams Elementary School went reverse training and surprised students at home with books supplies and goodies. The staff took advantage of a half day of school on Friday and headed out just after lunch. Although some of the surprise factor was lost and students got the same treat last year, staff could not resist the opportunity to reach out to the students and their families in such a fun and engaging way. Once again, teachers dressed in Halloween attire like silly hats and boas and more. All the books circulated in the reverse treating event were purchased with Family Involvement Title I funds. All other suppliers were donated by the Community Outreach Parent Involvement Committee. 
for the occasion. Coddington Elementary School and Mobility 101 held their fourth annual caution parade. Eight students from Vanessa Bishop's special needs class had their wheelchairs and adaptive strollers decorated into a state-of-the-art costumes. Students and teachers lined the hallways of the school and cheered on the class as they made their way throughout the facility. Finally, the mission of New Hanover County Schools is to help every child to reach equipped and achieve. As part of our 2016-2020 strategic planning process, the district is seeking the opinions and feedback of our community in order to strengthen our service to our students. The New Hanover County Board of Education will consider the survey results in establishing a new strategic plan for the district. All survey answers will remain anonymous. To take the survey, go to nhcs.net and click NHCS Strategic Plan Community Survey under Items of Interest. The survey will be open until December 1st. Now, when your school news continues, we have an exciting lunch menu forecast. Plus, coming up in 60 seconds, we'll have reports on... Elementary singers selected for North Carolina Honors Chorus. UNCW students lead an educational STEM night at College Park. And schools awarded grant money for the Kate Fair Garden Company. This is your school news on cable and online. Look for our blue logo for all the latest news online at www.nhcs.net. Don't go away, we'll be right back. History's Timeline, a world of history in 60 seconds, brought to you by New Hanover County Schools. May 7, 1960, Leonid Brezhnev becomes president of the USSR. October 22, 1962, President John Kennedy announces that Russia has installed missiles in Cuba. After a U.S. blockade, the missiles are dismantled. December 2, 1967, the first human heart transplant is carried out successfully in Cape Town, South Africa. April 4, 1968, Martin Luther King, U.S. civil rights leader, is assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee. This has been History's Timeline, an educational snapshot of the fascinating people, places, and events that have shaped our past. I have been a teen court volunteer for four years. Teen court is an alternative system of justice. Student volunteers assume the roles of attorneys and jurors. This process empowers our generation to take responsibility for problems of crime and violence in our schools and community. If you know someone who may benefit from teen court or would like to become involved, please visit the Community Mediation Center on the web or call 362-8000. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. Welcome back to your school news. I'm Marley Hughes. 17 singers from New Hanover County Schools have been selected to participate in the 2015 North Carolina Elementary Honors Chorus, sponsored by the North Carolina Music Educators Association. With a complete report on the event and singers selected is YSN reporter Louis Bihar. The North Carolina Elementary Honors Chorus is a group of approximately 200 students who are chosen from across North Carolina to perform at the North Carolina Music Educators Association Conference each year. The purpose of this Honors Chorus is to provide students with the opportunity to develop their abilities to the greatest possible extent. Teachers who are members of the Music Education Association are permitted to send in auditions from six of their students. Judges are hired to select the members of the, of the Honors Chorus. Teachers then work with their students in preparation for the concert, and students spend the day before the concert working with the conductor. Participating in the North Carolina El Elementary Honors Chorus this year from Anderson was Berkeley and Lindley. The music teacher is Jeremy Matthews. From Bellamy, Georgia Boyer and Aaliyah Marshall. Their teacher is Emily Probst. From Eaton, Avery Dameron, Emma K. Ellis, Logan Hewitt, Mia Rose, and Jasmine Walker were chosen for the honors course. Ian's music teacher is Carly Kensler. From Forest Hills, student Layla Klein was selected, and her music teacher is Jasmine Sutton. Going to honors course from Holly Tree is Ruby Gorman. Her music teacher is Susan Gardner. 
Four students from Ogden were selected for an honors course. They are Mia Kelly, Tyler Neese, Kira Padgett, and Kaylee Pettigrew. Lynn Stemke is the music teacher. Pine Valley has two students, Eva Salerno and Maddie Thompson, were selected for the chorus. Their teacher is Vicky Stump. Selected via a rigorous recorded audition, the 200 voice chorus singers will present a concert at the NCMEA Annual Professional Development Conference in Winston-Salem on November 8th. The guest conductor will be Dr. Rollo Dilworth, Professor of Choral Music Education and the Chair of the Department of Music Education and Therapy at Temple University Boyer College of Music and Dance in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Reporting for your school news, this is Louis Behar. The Laney STEM Chem Techathon team was thrilled with their new lab supplies purchase with the $1,000 participation prize they won at the last Springs event. Team members will use the supplies to participate to, to practice this for the hands-on components of the contest. With the guidance of Laney chemistry teacher Melissa King, the Chem Techathon presented by Cape Fear Community College allows teams of high school students in Pender and New Hanover counties to complete a semester-long research project. This is the second year that CSCC has been able to offer Chemtechathon thanks to a three-year grant awarded the school by Burroughs Welcome. At its general meeting at the Cape Fear Garden Club gave out over $75,000 in grant awards to 33 nonprofit organizations with proceeds from the 2015 Azalea Garden Tour. Among the grant recipients were several New Hanover County schools and school organizations. Dorothy B. Johnson, Priest K School, Friends of Hoggard High ba Baseball, Hoggard High School, CTSO, Mary C. Williams Elementary PTA, Mary Washington Howe Pre-K School, and New Hanover High School PTSA. For over 60 years, funds from the annual Azalea Garden Tour have supported local beautification, conservation, and educational projects to local nonprofit organizations as well as endowed scholarships. Students at College Park Elementary discovered the exciting world of science, technology, engineering, and math with help of students from UNCW. Ten stations were set up in the school's cafeteria, giving students a wide range of opportunities to explore all the elements of STEM. One station explored the world of electronics, and students were given a single light bulb, one wire, and a battery, and had to discover how many ways they could get the bulb to light up. Students also got to explore the world of engineering by building roller coasters with, with hills, loops, and turns. And we're doing lots of fun science activities. This is sponsored by UNCW Outreach STEM program and all these college students have, vo have volunteered their time to come and teach our kids some really neat science experiments. One of the coolest stations at College Park STEM night event were the ghost bubble. Using dry ice vapor bubbles were made and students discovered how the density of the bubbles caused them to fall fast and create really neat fog effects. While other popular stations had students cutting single holes in standard pieces of paper large enough for them to walk through, it was an educational night for the students at College Park. The New Hanover County School's 8th grade and high school all-county orchestra concert was held at the Minnie Evans Performing Arts Center. Outstanding student musicians from New Hanover County's middle and high schools perform a host of exciting numbers like the last three movements of Hayden Symphony No. 27 and Apollo Suite by Merrill Isaac. New Hanover County Schools welcomed Donald Walter as the 8th grade all-county orchestra conductor. Mr. Walter is the senior director of orchestras and bands at Northwest Guilford Middle School. The high school was con conductor was Jim Wadalow. Mr. Wadalow is a member of the facility at Meredith College and music director of the Raleigh Symphony Orchestra. The concert was recorded and will air here on the Learning Network. Now don't go away. Coming up, Ogden Elementary holds its first Family Science Night. Plus, we have our new segment, Education Index, and the Lunch Billow Fair. Your school news will continue after the break. So, April. Yeah? You know your charger's still using energy when it's plugged into the wall, right? Yeah, but uh, that's not my charger. I don't even have a cell phone. Millions of kids are using their energy wisely. What's your excuse? In the 
1920s, Sherwood Anderson used the theories of Freud to write about the private problems of a small town Middle Westerners in Winesburg, Ohio. Anderson portrayed his characters as leading unfulfilled and twisted lives. Anderson's prose, derived from everyday American speech, influenced almost every great American writer of the next generation. This background in literature has been brought to you by New Hanover County Schools. Every day, 17 people die waiting for an organ transplant. Still, there are over 90,000 people on a waiting list for a new organ. There are many ways that you can get involved to make the difference in the life of a person in need. First, discuss your decisions with your family. Second, say yes when receiving your driver's license. And lastly, you can sign up right at home. Simply go to www.organdonor.gov where you can download, print, sign, and officially carry around your own donor card. Make today the day you donate life. Welcome back to your school news. It's time for our education index, a look around the nation and the world at some of our of some of the top stories in education. Topping the index, Apple's new iOS update includes a batch of new emojis, tacos, unicorns, popcorn, and other and others in high demand. But one of the themes, a seemingly low-key black and white eye inside a speech bubble, is the first emoji with a cause to stop cyberbullying. The emoji is part of a new digital campaign called I Am A Witness, created by the Ad Council to help empower teens that witness bullying to speak up and help victims. The campaign will be backed by 8 million in donated media with celebrity endorsements, activations and teen focused platforms like Tumblr, Snapchat, Instagram, Vivo, Kick, and Whisperer, among others, as well as a 30 second PSA spot on TV. Oracle founder Larry Ellison already owns an island in Hawaii. Now his company is building a high school next to its Silicon Valley headquarters to help fulfill Ellison's desire to teach students more about technology and problem solving. The plan unveiled last week calls for the business software maker to complete the 64,000 square foot school by August 2017, although it will be owned by one of the biggest companies in the world, the school isn't going to be called Oracle High. Instead, it will be known as Design Tech or DTech. The campus being built by Oracle will accommodate up to 550 students and 30 teachers in the shadow of Oracle's towering office in Redwood Shores, California, about 25 miles south of San Francisco. The school will be free and open to any student living in California. Finally, education leaders cited implementations on the Common Core as a possible reason for a dip in national test scores released last week. The National Assessment of Educational Progress, which has been administrated every other year since the late 1960s, scores 4th and 8th graders in math and reading. Results for both 8th grade exams dropped nationally, as did results for 4th grade math. Scores for the fourth grade reading test remain flat from the last results. Many states have employed the more rigorous Common Core academic standards in the last two years. The dip in the national score could give the Common Core many critics, some who see the standards as federal overreach into local schools. One more reason to dislike it. And that's this week Education Index, a quick look at some of the most interesting educational stories from around the nation and world. Now don't go away, we'll be right back with the Lunch Billow Fair. This is your school news on cable and online. Look out for our blue logo for all the latest news online at www.nhcs.net. Sixty inch screen, high definition. Football season is coming up, you can watch it right here. What do you think? I'll take huh? it. Huh? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You're right. I don't need it. On race day, both fans and drivers get a lot of seat time. But staying idle too long can hurt your performance. I'm Casey Kane asking you to make healthy decisions. Take a walk, play with your kids, or take the stairs. Any activity will give you an edge. You've got a choice. Get moving. Eat smart, move more. North Carolina. Young, who got some good minutes in the first half, hits the jumper. Tiffany Young, a 
junior from Hillsboro, Alabama, has four. Young, 17, but has got it. And Tiffany Young with a sensational performance. Welcome back to Your School News. It's time now for this week's Lunch Bill Affair. Gone are the days of mystery meat and crabby hair net wearing lunch ladies. Across this county, school, school lunch rooms have gotten a facelift and a menu makeover. Hunter Ledman, our lunch menu analyst, joins us now with the week's school lunch menu so parents, students, teachers, and everyone working with the new Hanover County school system can plan their lunchtime options. Thanks, and welcome to this week's edition of the Lunch Bill Affair. We are kicking off the month on a no of November with an exciting menu. Let's take a look at this week's selections. On Tuesday, November 3rd, enjoy either an orange chicken with rice and an egg roll, a meatball hoagie, or a bacon cheeseburger. For your sides, choose from glazed carrots, green beans, or fresh fruit. On Wednesday, November 4th, you have two, two great entree choices, chicken, pot pie, pork chop sandwich, or cheesy breadsticks. On the side, pasta salad, corn, a garden salad, and diced pears. On Thursday, November 5th, choose from stuffed crust pizza, chicken club sandwich, or popcorn chicken with a roll. Then on the side, enjoy macaroni salad, tomato and cucumber salad, broccoli, or fresh fruit. On Friday, November 6th, to kick off the week, enjoy a hot dog with chili, fish sticks with hush puppies, or chicken nuggets with a roll. For the sides, you can choose from baked beans, a garden salad, carrot sticks, or spiced apples. For the weekend, I've got my healthy tip. Just like cars, buses, and trains cannot run without fuel. Our bodies need energy to work, especially after a night's sleep. Energy levels, levels are low, so when you are off to school or out and about at the weekend, start the day with a breakfast. Plenty of carbohydrates is just the ticket. Try toast with or bread or cereal with milk, fruit, or yogurt. Remember, it's about eating right. On Monday, November 9th, choose from chicken and cheese pasta with a breadstick, French bread pizza, or deluxe chicken sandwich. And on the side, garden peas, a garden salad, glazed sweet potatoes, or mixed fruit. All of the menus this year include more fresh produce, whole grains, and lower calorie snacks. Plus, our school cafeterias have done away with frying and cutting back on fats, sodiums, and sugars. Now, taking a look once again at your lunch entrees for the week, you've got some great selections for the week with some really great sides to choose from throughout the week. Tuesday, don't miss out on the orange chicken, Wednesday, chicken pot pie, and on Thursday, stuffed crust pizza. That's what's on slate for lunch at your school's cafeteria, so don't miss any of these nutritious, delicious, and healthy meals. From the newsroom, this is Hunter Ledman. Back to you. Thanks, Hunter. Don't forget, you can also catch the Lunch Bill Fair during the morning show here on the Learning Network and get lots of helpful nutrition information online at www.nhcs.net slash nutrition. Now don't go away. Coming up, Ogden Elementary School holds its first Family Science Night. Your school news will continue after the break. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. When you see and hear the following statement, just before your favorite program, the following program is made possible with the support of... Pay attention, because the messages and announcements that follow give credit to our corporate and community partners who are making a great business investment by showing their backing for the students and schools here in New Hanover County. Please show your support to our underwriters whose names and logos are associated with the shows produced by New Hanover County Schools Television by saying thank you when you enter their places of business or visit their offices. For those businesses and organizations that would like to join our roster of underwriters and benefit from the corporate sponsorship of one of our programs, then give us a call at 254-4106. And thanks again 
to all our sponsors and those who support them. Welcome back to Your School News. Earlier in the show, we showcased College Park Elementary School's STEM night with UNCW. Also, last week, Ogden Elementary hosted their very first Family Science Night. The event featured community agencies such as Fort Fisher Aquarium, 4-H Club of Wilmington, Beekeepers of Wilmington, GE, the Arboretum, and New Hanover County Farm Bureau had exhibits for families to visit. A big part of the event was WWAY TV 3's who, Whose Weather Man did his weather report live from the event, broadcasted for the event. During the science night, students learned about nuclear energy from GE workers, while other workers got a chance to touch and interact with marine life brought by specialists from Fort Fisher. Because the subject of science is so vast, the special night of science opened the door to many of the basics, allowing students to decide their personal interest. Many of the students got a chance to use telescopes, microscopes, and other devices in the laboratory to examine objects and determine differences between them. While still others were given the chance to conduct experiments and experience the amazing results, Family Science Night is the start of an exciting educational tradition at Ogden Elementary. That does it for this edition of Your School News. Recapping some of our main stories. New Hanover County Schools held its 2015 Transition Fair. Williams Elementary held a reverse treating event for students, and the Strategic Planning Community Survey is now available online. Remember, Your School News is on cable and online, and don't forget to start your morning with our light and lively morning show weekdays at 6 a.m. I'm Sierra Dunmuth. And I'm Marley Hughes. On behalf of the entire YSN crew, thanks for watching New Hanover County Schools TV on the Learning Network. Have a great day.